LaFlair is a Vietnamese-based company, e-commerce company. And with me is the CEO, Louis Gautier, to talk about the company and their recent acquisition with, uh, from Society Pass and explain how um, the company was formed, Louis. I mean, just give me a little history of LaFlair. First of all, thank you for, for having me. Um, so LeFleur is a company that I started in 2015. So it's been about 10 years that I live in Southeast Asia and, and in particular in Vietnam. And I've been doing e-commerce most of my life. Uh, first with Groupon back in Europe uh, uh, and in France in particular where I'm from. Uh, I then, jo then joined in 2013 a company named Lazada that used to be owned by Rocket Internet and then I was sold to Alibaba in 2016. And in 2015, I basically realized that there was still a gap in the e-commerce market and that in particular international brands, uh, uh, world famous brands were not that um, no, we're, we're not merchandise that were very suitable for those, you know, marketplaces that that offered very very little control uh, of the supply and protection for the customers. So we st we decided to start our own e-commerce website uh, uh, that we called Le Flair, and that for the following five years uh, did very well. We had you know more than two hundred employees, multi million dollar sales, growing very nicely. Uh, until in 2020, we, you know, st obviously started to experience certain difficulties um, uh, due, due to the, you know, COVID pandemic, which led to afterwards the acquisition of the company by Society Pass in, in, in May 2020. Okay, so describe it in 2020, what happened? Because, I mean, it, it seems like digital businesses did okay during that time. So what happened there that was challenging for you? Well, first of all, as a, as a company, uh, we, you know, we had very nice growth. We were basically more than doubling revenue every year, and we were raising capital every year. But at the end of 2019, uh, a lot of startups like ours that were high growth, high burn, uh, had uh, difficulties raising further capital because of you know the uh, environment and, and what was happening with, with WeWork at the time. Uh, so it made it difficult for us to exactly to, to close our, we were working on a $40 million round of funding at that time. Uh, and then at the beginning of the year, as I said, COVID started to hit and lockdown started to happen. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we, we were selling fashion goods, international, international brands. These are not essential goods, right? So all the businesses that were not selling essential goods online did very did, did, like did actually had to stop their operation for a certain time. So for us, we, it was uh, uh, we were unable to basically continue the business for for quite an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. And so you were acquired by Society Pass, which is um, you know operates mainly in Southeast Asia. Um, Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so describe that. Like what has happened um, with La Flair since then? And uh, just take me through that journey. So after the, the acquisition of Society Pass, Le Flair became uh, the e-commerce vertical of the, of the Society Pass ecosystem that is basically building an, an ecosystem of companies uh, that are you know, digitally enabled in Southeast Asia. And so what has happened is that obviously we joined forces with their team. We are now able to leverage the fact that they are a public company listed on NASDAQ and are you know, um, well capitalized, which obviously helps us as an e-commerce company, which is a capital intensive business uh, to obviously expand our operation and, 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 and you know, grow our sales. But it's also uh, allowed us to rethink our business model and 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 how we are you know seeing the the near future and midterm future for for our company. So before the acquisition of Society Pass, uh, we were and we are pretty much still today a single platform that only uh, um, acts at the end of the life cycle of the product and at, at the end of the e-commerce value chain. What it means is that we don't own any inventory. Uh, which is you know, uh, obviously very, very little risk associated with that. But in, in counterpart, we also take a relatively small margin on every sales that we make. And as an e-commerce company, obviously you should not work towards increasing your, your prices and, and, and the margin that you make of the customers because it impacts negatively your, your, your sales. Uh, so obviously um, e-commerce being also a very, 
um, expensive business, especially when it comes to acquiring customers and customer acquisition costs, it usually requires a tremendous amount of capital. Uh, and all those society classes uh, is now is now a public company. We do not want to, you know, follow the path of, you know, the the the, the large e-commerce websites that are raising and burning billions of dollars. So we are making our business model shift to be more suitable to uh, the Southeast Asia economy and the way we believe e-commerce companies and retail companies should should grow in the near future. And and how we do that is basically that by uh, integrating the e-commerce and retail value chain. Okay. Well, describe like how, where you think e-commerce is going. Like, how are you positioning for this evolving industry? Well, e-commerce. So, from a consumer standpoint, it's it's only going to continue to grow. Right? E-commerce penetration, especially after COVID, is 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 only increasing. It was used to be around ten percent. It's only going to going to keep keep on growing because not only during uh covid did customer form that habit but they keep that habit because it's, it's, it's just obviously so much more convenient and now part of their lifestyle but e-commerce as a, as a business obviously will will in 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 my opinion and and, and my my forecast is going to keep concentrating around a small number of very very well founded player that can obviously take on losses for for decades uh, and those big groups are uh, going to continue to to be very good on those large scale platforms, but it's also going to create some opportunity, opportunities for certain uh, uh, categories of goods or certain niches, uh, and for entrepreneurs to to you know start uh, uh, innovative company in the e-commerce e space or or e-commerce you know enabling services uh, uh, that that we believe is going to be the future of e-commerce in the region. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm just interested too, finally, and you're in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. I mean, how is the industry in Southeast Asia? Um, how, what is it like to operate there? And is there a lot of growth ahead in that part of the world? This fastest growing, uh, one of the fastest growing region in the world. So as, as a consumer market, millions of people right now every year are, are seeing their pur purchasing power uh, grow tremendously which for any consumer business is, is creating tremendous opportunities. So every consumer business, including e-commerce, uh, uh, is, 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 is betting on the, in, on the region right now. Now, there are challenges. Uh, however, those challenges are also, um, you know, we, we, we are addressing them very fast because this, this region is making a, a tr tremendous progress in infrastructure and in adoption of uh, you know uh, the digital form of payments and many things, even regulations and 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 the the legal framework and and do, the ease of doing business in those markets is getting better and better. So this is definitely uh, uh, the most exciting region to to be in uh, in 2022 and in the near future. Yeah, well, it sounds like it. So thank you so much, Louis, for joining. Thank you very much. Explaining La Flair and your relationship with Society Pass. It's very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.